There's a reason when we're climbing that climbing towers close, even if it's not currently raining, if the climbing tower is soaked. Some of those handholds that I grabbed, my hands just slipped right off of it. Good morning, Appalachian Trail. It's a little moist this morning from all the rain we had last night, but there are spots of sun beaming through the trees. I'm wearing my spare shirt right now because my other shirts are completely soaked from yesterday. Got caught in the pouring rain and were soaked to the skin, hung them up to dry. Guess what? They didn't dry because it continued raining on through the night. I put on my wet pants, um, but uh, I couldn't do what Frizzle did and put on the wet uh, shirt. Anyway, everything is wet, but my sleep gear is dry. Everything in my pack is dry. This is cool, Massachusetts. Cool terrain here. This is called the Ice Gulch that often retains ice and snow late into the year. No ice and snow today, but you can see why it would. So for one, I put my wet White Eagle shirt and my soaking wet red long sleeve shirt in a Ziploc bag and put it in the outside pocket of my pack to let them be wet together and not on me for a little while because nothing is drying in this terrain right now. Secondly, I am trying to take the easiest path without rocks and roots right now, even if it's a little bit of a detour. Not really a detour, but a little bit longer than most people go because the rocks and roots are extremely slippery right now and they don't show any sign of changing soon because the sun's not high enough in the sky yet. So we're walking, but we're gonna be walking carefully and slowly given the conditions. I don't know why any of us expected anything to dry overnight. We still hung it though. Good morning and welcome to the Appalachian Trail. We are Stick the Eagle and we are hiking northbound from Springer Mountain, Georgia to Katahdin, Maine. Today is day 96 and I am thrilled, we are thrilled that you are together with us for this journey today. If you have been here before, welcome back. And if you have not been here before, welcome. And I hope that you enjoy following along with us for today's adventures on day 96. So for the past few days, I've been traveling with Nichols and Frizzle. I must say traveling in a group and planning things as a group is much different than traveling by yourself. When I was traveling by myself, I would just walk and see where I ended up for the night, about five or six o'clock. But when you're traveling with a group, you need to make a plan for where you're gonna stop at the end of the day if you want to plan to stick together. So we made a plan to go to Goose Pond today, but I find it's very different different attitude of hiking when you have your destination already planned out before even the middle of the day right from the start so that's just a different dynamic that I am trying to get used to so that I can hike with Bristol and Nichols instead of just going my own way because I enjoy being with them a little reflection on rain if we're to embrace everything of God's creation, we are also to embrace the rain. Because it is rain that nourishes the earth and makes all this green life possible. All the beauty we appreciate would not be possible if it didn't rain. We could not live if it didn't rain. The trees would not grow, therefore we would not have oxygen. Think of all the things you would not have without the nourishing power that rain brings to this earth. So, rain can be annoying sometimes when it disrupts our family events or Memorial Day picnics or parades or simply disrupts our hike and makes our hike wetter than planned. But we come out into the woods to have fellowship with nature, to have fellowship with the wilderness, 
And if we're truly to have fellowship with the wilderness, we need to have fellowship with rain too and appreciate all the good gifts it brings. Of course, I feel like I need to say, be smart with rain too. Don't go out and spend all day in 40 degree rain because you can get hypothermia. Enjoy it safely. When you get wet, get into, get into some dry clothes like we did last night. Try to dry out those clothes. I'm just saying, don't let rain ruin your day. There's a sign for Otis. I know Otis, I passed it on the way from between Connecticut and uh, the cause that I went to near Albany. Appalachian Trail, Georgia and Maine. Some more history near this place. I've been finding myself a little bit disappointed this morning that I've seemed to be going slower and slower uphill. I don't know if it's like I'm losing energy or I'm not nourished enough or something, but I just seem to have less energy going uphill. And I tell myself, well, that's fine. You go your own speed, you hike your own hike. It's absolutely fine. I just hiked up a decent sized hill and there's houses up here. I started hearing this lawnmower or something and I'm like, I just hiked up a mountain. <laughs> That's the upcoming trail. The rocks are still wet to make things interesting, so we go slow, which is fine. On another bright side, I am high up enough that the videos are uploading really well right now, so I'm able to catch up on some uploads. I did editing last night, um, but wasn't quite good enough for strong uploads, but now I have four bars of service up here, so that's always good. So I wanted to sit down in that rock and rest a while before continuing up the hill here. But then I told myself, well, what if you sit down there like you have before and then just a few more paces is a nice view and you could sit down and take a break on that view instead of just sitting on a rock in the middle of the woods and enjoy the view while I take a break. And then when I tell myself that, I often find myself that when I do get to the top and see that it's flat, I have the motivation to continue on. The result is that I'll take less breaks and keep moving forward one step at a time, even if it's small. Case in point, y'all. I reached the top, or at least what looks like a top, at least for now, and there's no view, but it's flat, so it's easier, and I can continue on at a normal pace. And instead of wasting 15 minutes I wouldn't necessarily be wasting, I shouldn't use that word. But instead of spending 15 minutes on a rock, taking a break, I can take my break while walking on a flat portion of trail, still slowly, and just catch my breath. All that work to get up the hill, there wasn't even any sort of view, it was just like this. And now we're going back down. That's what the AT does. Goes up sometimes to a hill that doesn't have a single view, and then goes down. Just to say, hey, we climbed a hill. <laughs> anyway, it's good exercise. Instead of just going flat, it'd get boring after a while if it was just flat. But some of them do seem pointless. Some of the ups and downs, but I also say, this is the trail. And we embrace every moment of it. Doesn't matter if it slows us down. It's not going to discourage me anymore. It used to, but I am kicking that in the nose and saying, not anymore. The mud has been getting a little bit worse as I move north. I don't think it's just north, it's just... Uh, been a few more muddy patches than normal. There's a really nice breeze here, and I'm coming up on some sort of lake of some kind. That's really cool. It's the Pond Loop Trail. Here's a scenic lookout in this pond. It's like a remote pond, a really nice spot. I could stay here a while. Wowzers, I might take a break somewhere up there. Stumps like this are very good for taking a break on. So I took about a 15 minute break there. That's had some trail mix. That felt good. 
I can understand why some YouTubers cut their channel after the first little bit. Because it is a lot of stress trying to upload in the north. Because you don't have the same hostels and such. If you want good Wi-Fi, you have to pay $200 for a room somewhere instead of the $30 or $40 that you pay down south. So, I find myself constantly checking to see how the video is doing on the upload. It usually takes like 24 to 30 hours to upload one 30 minute video out here. So, I mean, I didn't used to be able to do that at all down in the south. So it's the uh, Wi-Fi connection is a little bit better in the north, I think. But I keep checking to make sure, hey, you're still uploading? So then I can upload the next one when you're done. When that is on my mind, I do find it can take away from the experience of the trail a little bit. So I, uh, I'm trying not to let that, you know, control my experience. Though I must say that part of the experience is having you all along with me, because you all are basically part of my tramway. <laughs> you know you are. So I took a break on a stump, and then I find that this was like 0.3 up here. <laughs> Look at this view of Nichols, and that view too. That's gorgeous. <laughs> Look at these mountains. That tall mountain right there is Everett. The one to the left is Race, and to the left of that is Bear in Connecticut. Thanks to Professor Nichols for that. Water source. I know water's heavy, but I prefer to have enough. I keep thinking how Master Splinter was like, I only carry a liter at a time. Water is so heavy. And yeah, it is heavy. But there were times where I needed more than a liter of water. And I'd rather just make sure I have more than enough water. So I'm on the safe side, even though it is heavy. <laughs> I've been on the safe side for a while with water and food. And, you know... Somebody else today was like, having that much water makes you go slower. But I don't know if I like the next water source. Sometimes it's really cloudy and not cascading and hard to get from if you don't like scoop. And it's hard for me to scoop with what I have. So again, hike your own hike. Don't worry about what, other, what others say or what others do. If I go a little slower and get exhausted because of that, what's the big deal? Oh, by the way, I did mean I did not have to walk down the quarter mile to the water source last night at the shelter or get the murky water from the stream that was next to the shelter. This is why I do it though, because after taking this hill here, taking on this hill, I feel like drinking a quarter liter. So it allows me to drink a lot as I walk up hills and feel at peace doing so without using all of my water supply. Hydration is very important out here, and in my opinion, it's better to be safe than sorry. Wow, oh, it took me till 11 o'clock to get to the Willcock South Shelters. <laughs> I mean, I left, didn't leave at eight cause, till eight because we were trying to dry stuff out, but anywho, it's another lovely pond out in the middle of nowhere here in Massachusetts. A section hiker from Louisiana just gave me a piece of his Subway sandwich, so thank you. That was nice. I was just walking by and he's like, you want a piece? I'm like, well, sure, I won't decline that. And that was awesome. Love the kindness of Southerners. And other news is that there's no service here, so I think that's God telling me to just be present in the moment, forget about uploads for a moment. <laughs> I looked to see if it has a pond and and far out, there's no label, it's just pond. <laughs> I 
You know what I said a few days ago? To truly be at peace, or to know if you're at peace, you know that nothing will annoy you. If you are at peace, nothing will annoy you. And I had a few things in mind today, but right now, in this moment, I'm just walking. The hill's not annoying me. The fact that Frisco and Nichols are both ahead of me is not annoying me. The fact that I have no service to upload my videos at this present moment is not annoying me. It just hit me that I'm in a remote piece of Massachusetts wilderness and I get to walk in it right now and listen to the birds, listen to the wind on a nice day. And I can take all the time I want just to embrace this moment and this fellowship with nature. For this is a footpath for those who, feek, who seek fellowship with the wilderness. The wilderness gives you something that nothing else can. An experience, you may feel small, one small piece in the grand workings of nature. But I am so grateful to be one piece here and to be here to witness everything else at work. Recreate what just happened here. Walking along the trail, walking along. What? What happened to the trail? Am I on the trail? Did I lose the trail? Huh, I looked back southbound. There's a blaze. Hmm. Well, I guess there's just a tree down. Yep, that's what it is. Found the Wilcox North Shelter, Upper Goose Pond Cabin, 14 miles north. That is where we are headed. Upper Goose Pond Cabin. There's the Wilcox North. Onward northbound. So it's 12 o'clock and there's 14 miles to the Upper Goose Pond Cabin. Piece of cake. All right, y'all, today's 12 o'clock tip starts with a fact. I have never not enjoyed a day hike. I've never not enjoyed a weekend hike. And I'm, no, I know that there's not a section hiker who doesn't enjoy their section hike. Section hikers are so friendly too. This one who just gave me a sand, part of his sandwich. I love that. But it has taken me three months to really feel like I am at peace out here and like I don't need to crush the miles or get to my next destination in order to be on time. So my tip for you is that if you can afford the time and really want the fellowship with the wilderness and, and to feel real peace, you need to have a long-term commitment to that. Now, I'm not saying a through hike is the only way to get long-term peace. There are certainly other ways. This is the way that's worked for me, but it just proves that you need to be doing something for a while and stay committed to that and go through all the, all the faults and blows in the middle that are going to throw you off track, but recommit yourself to that track of peace. For me, it's involved just continuing walking north. For you, it might be something else. But I want you all to be able to feel the peace in the woods that I feel right now. But it's taken me three months to do it, so. I don't know what it means for you, only you do. Just do whatever you can to spend as much time out in the outdoors that you can. That's my tip for you. It is beautiful out here. I'm actually so glad that I haven't seen a house or a road in a couple of hours. It's been just nature. And that's all that needs said about that. This is the airplane trail. I don't see how an airplane could fit down this trail, but right on cue, there's an airplane up there. Ha <laughs> ha.
Good afternoon, Blaze. I love the smell of pines and firs too. There's a lot of fir trees around here. And they smell so nice. I feel so remote here on this trail. It's like so cool. I think I'm gonna love Maine because that is known for being remote. <laughs> so far, Massachusetts is rivaling North Carolina as my favorite state in the AT so far because while well, North Carolina had the gorgeous views that I absolutely loved, Massachusetts is starting to get to that point where I realize I'm starting to near the end. I'm in the last third of my trip here, of our trip. We've passed the two-thirds mark and it's more remote and we're able to reflect more on what it means to be out here, surrounded by nothing but nature. And that sense of peace is really coming, as I said earlier, as I get farther and farther north. And for that, I just love the feeling that Massachusetts is giving me right now. It's even so remote that Recreation Trail no trail. There has to be a trail on the other side, but we get to climb through trees again. Yeah, I can see the trail underneath the mess here. I can see it. I can find it again. Just have to get past. That must have been a fresh fall because there was no obvious path that people had taken around that tree. So instead, I got to bushwhack and practice an even more remote trail making or trail taking experience. We are descending down this beautiful hill of plants and I hear my first town noise in hours. I haven't seen a paved road in hours, but look at this. Green, lush green. The noise I was hearing still wasn't from a paved road. It's only a dirt road. It is two o'clock. I have reached a shaker campsite and it is 9.5 the Goose Pond Cabin. I'm gonna check out the privy here at Shaker. This is cool. You have a couple of tent platforms as well as a fire pit and a picnic table. All right, Shaker campsite was nice. Now heading on. It is a gorgeous 70 degrees right now at 2.30 in the afternoon. Not too hot. Not too cold. Perfect. 9.5 to Goose Pond. Onward we head northbound. Mountains. We're going up another mountain because we can. It's called the Tyringham Cobble in Tyringham, Massachusetts. Oh, this is cool. Cowell Loop Trail to Summit Vista. That's cool. This is like an official sign here. So it's got a Cowell Loop Trail and the Appalachian Trail and some vistas. Well, we can look forward to that. So there's a, like a little town park here. Don't you just love signs like this? Georgia, one direction, Maine, the other direction. Oh, we'll continue on to Maine. Oh, look, there's even a little bench here at the top. That's cool. I may have thought that was the top. It's not the top. Hey, look, there's even a bench at this top. 
view of the mountains and a little cemetery down there. Well, I may have thought that was the top. And it was the top. Hello, white blaze. And blue blaze. I like you too. Half a mile out of the AT stand. It's a random picnic table. You know, I'd lay out my stuff to dry here if I wasn't going to the AT stand. There we go, AT stand. Hey, this is the AT stand. There is charging here, which is fantastic, so I can charge my power bank. And here's a hiker log, as well as a freezer, which sometimes have ice cream. Right now it is freeze pops and soda. And they also have some Wi-Fi here. I've been going through my whole top compartment here because I had stuck these mums in here and this one opened and dehydrated itself all inside. So everything got sticky. When it rained, the rain must have gotten in and loosened the top. So that's unfortunate. Looking at the trail log, I see Special K, who I met in 519. Then Bugs is on... 522 as well as Bushman and we have Gazelle on 523 one day behind them I met Branch, Branch and Rock Lizard and PBJ 525 so PBJ is actually three days behind Bugs and Bushman and then all three of us Frizzle, Nichols and myself here in 528 so PBJ is three days ahead of us and the rest are six days ahead of us. All right, Joe, we're leaving the trail stand. Did see Nichols on his way out. Uh, we charged our power bank and we got two videos uploaded with the free Wi-Fi. The electricity and the free Wi-Fi were huge. I started uploading two more, but it's taken too long at this point. I've been here an hour. And I still have eight miles to go to get to Upper Goose Pond, which is the goal for today. And it's 4.30, so having to do eight miles still, I've got to keep on heading north. But at least I know the next two days are good for content for you all. And I should be able to keep uploading the others with data, even though it takes like 30 hours per video. We should be good. So. Let's keep on flying and having a good time out here. It's a shelter. We'd build these kind of things in wilderness survival. It won't protect from the rain, but it's kind of nice. <laughs> we built shelters exactly like that, maybe even smaller in wilderness survival merit badge class, and we have to learn how to survive in the wilderness. Of course, if you're out in the wilderness, you'll gradually improve on your shelter as time goes on. So you keep adding more and more things and make it more permanent and more rainproof, potentially. I'm so remote in Massachusetts, there's no service. And there's been no service most of the day. But you know what? I don't even care about that much. I'd like to get the videos, but you know, I got two. I'm good for the next two days. So let's embrace this. It's getting windy. Oh, <laughs> I thought I heard rain. There's a waterfall over there. There's the waterfall. All right, AT. Look at this view. AT, I love it. We are loving it. Whoa, the thing about these bog boards, when you step on them, you have no idea if they're gonna move and they often do move. <laughs> This bridge I'm walking on looks so sturdy, doesn't it? It's even moving as I walk. <laughs> okay. Upper Goose Pond Cabin, seven miles. Here we go. As I climb this mountain in the way of me and Goose Pond, I remember that I have the strength 
of the eagle flying high. It will power me up, then over this hill to catch up with my friends and view this upper goose pond cabin. I have the strength of the eagle flying high. The beautiful thing about this goose pond wilderness is that it is a wilderness area too. So I have both sides of the day surrounded by wilderness with a recharge of my powdery bank in between. I love the pine forest. Honestly, ever since Frissel powered to catch up to us, it seems like she has jet speed on. She left at eight with the rest of us too. And she got to the trail stand according to Nichols at one o'clock. That was 14 miles in five hours. That's like three miles per hour. That's amazing. I've climbed already 400 since the last road crossing. I got another 400 or so to go to 1700 feet. And that's the elevation of the Goose Pond is up. So once I get this out of the way, I should have a pretty flat walk to Goose Pond. Well, I just came from there. When you are pushing up a hill, tell yourself the top's almost there. And then I'll have a nice flat, easy walk. Here we go. Now we can enjoy our wilderness walk again instead of huffing and puffing. Our wilderness walk in the middle of nowhere, listen to the birds, have a chill evening. I did take a 15 minute break back there. I ate a Slim Jim, a Fig Bar, and a Snickers Bar. One other thing that I'm forgetting. I did find my first tick on me while I was eating those snacks and I pulled it off I removed it you just want to make sure you get right next to the skin so you get its head as well because you don't want to leave its head inside you anyway that's the consequence of wearing shorts which I recently have been it's gotten too warm to wear my long leggings right now General rule of thumb for ticks is just don't let them be on your body for more than 24 hours and they can't transmit anything to you. So I check every time I take a break. Welcome to the National Scenic Trail. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah, it's a careful operation. So you wanna make sure that you get as close to your skin as possible because if you leave its head in there, it can still transmit. So you wanna be careful, you don't wanna crush it. Be careful, it's a delicate operation, but I've had, well, I've had my training and I know how to do it. Just don't do it carelessly. You know, sometimes I believe I'm struggling. I'm struggling to keep up with others. Uh, Frisell and Nichols are so much faster than me, but you know, you don't compare yourself to others. They were just faster than me today because I was struggling up some hills, but I just passed two people in the past half hour who are trying to get Goose Pond and I said, you're going to Goose Pond also? And you're like discouragedly, I don't think I'm going to make it. I'm like, I want to give back and say, yes, you can make it. It's only four miles. Just keep walking, just keep walking. You can do it. I believe in you. And then I gave them a short prayer after I left, but I said, God help these hikers to get to the destination. Help them to be safe tonight. If I can give back, at all, anything from how others have encouraged me, I can be an encouragement to others here on trail. And I hope to see him come into Goose Pond later, even if it's after dark. That spot is encouraging to me for those who are behind me, because even though you're not supposed to stealth camp in Massachusetts, if you can't make it to your destination, sometimes you just have to, and that would be a good spot for them. So I'm glad they at least have a good option. I also left a comment in Far Out at the waypoint in case they see it, with them in mind, of course, so that if they are trying to push and are getting more discouraged, they can look at the comments if they have Far Out and say, hey, somebody left a comment, there's a spot here. So, hoping all good things for them. I have to balance on these boards here because like I said before, they move. You know what's funny? I think I'm in the middle of nowhere and then I emerge onto a road, and there's the house through the trees. All right, Upper Goose Pond Natural Area Boundary 1.1.
Route 20, US Route 20 is 4.3 miles. Interstate 90 is right there too. We'll be crossing that tomorrow. There's the random house in the middle of nowhere up here near the Goose Pond boundary. So it's a quarter to seven right now. We have three miles to go to the Goose Pond shelter. Ever since that climb right out of the trail stand area, it's been a nice smooth walk. So really enjoying it. Really nice breeze coming in. Makes for good progress and good enjoyment of the trail. Little bitty boulder field here at seven o'clock or two miles away. Upper Goose Pond natural area. You know what's surprising to me? I mean, it might not be that surprising. I can hear Interstate 90 already. 1.6 miles to my destination, overnight cabin trail. You probably can't hear Interstate 90 yet, but I can hear it off in the distance, which is kind of cool, I guess, but <laughs> it does not interfere with the wilderness experience a little bit. Near this site on the shores of Upper Goose Pond, the Mahi Kennel Club. That's cool. Here are the shores of Goose Pond. I was thinking I would be able to get a clear shot without any branches, but I haven't spotted one yet. But this is Goose Pond. US Route 20, just 1.6 miles away, up a Goose Pond cabin and campsite. Cabin open. See you in the morning, AT. It's 8 o'clock and we reached the spur trail to Goose Pond cabin. I see picnic table and tent platforms, as well as a bear box. I think we're getting closer. Kind of proud for a moment of that eight mile push from 4.30 to eight with only one break. There's the cabin. We have a cabin and bear box. And this says pond water, not portable, do not drink. <laughs> All right. All right, we are here at the Goose Pond Cabin. It is open. We found a bunk. I have not found the caretaker. I'm going to try to see if I can see the caretaker in the cabin over there. Um, but Frisell and Nichols are here, and we had a good day, I think about 21 miles. Uh, I'll try to show the beach and the cabin a little bit better tomorrow morning when it's less dark. But that was the end of a good day. And we're ready for what's to come in the future. So that was day 96. And we're ending it on a good note. We end every day on a good note. I'm grateful for being out here, grateful for the birds, grateful for this cabin and friends. Uh, grateful for the cans of unfiltered water that we can filter there all ready to go so we don't need to collect in the morning. There's a lot of things to be grateful for out here and we're in Massachusetts. If you'd like to follow along for the rest of this AT journey, I invite you to subscribe if you have not done so already. If you just joined, you can also go back and watch the beginning if you're interested. And if you would like to follow along for some live updates as I can post them, you may follow along on my Instagram account by the same handle as my YouTube, at Stick the Eagle. For now, remember to embrace the journey and happy trails. Yeah, I got my clothes in the clothesline to see if they might dry a bit more.